brave. I hope when he's gone cold. <gasps> oh my god. We are in the most exciting location this week. Behind me is a place called Noth Fort, which was built in 1860 to protect Weymouth Harbour, which is just over there, from assailants. Now, none ever actually came because no one ever got close enough, but the fort has stood here resolutely since that time. And not only is it full of all sorts of interesting knickknacks and corridors and nooks and crannies, but it also has a variety of ghosts. And our ghost next door this week is a chap called the Whistling Gunner, who's been heard and seen here many, many times. And we're going to see if we can tune into him tonight or even film him. It um, actually looks quite beautiful from here because we're quite high up. This must have been Spooksville back in the day. With the mist rolling in off the sea. So poetic. Oh my just, god, I actually just saw it. Yeah, 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 yeah. from the corner. It's so active in that room. Like, I'm just watching this room. There's no one, did you not see it? This, this like, all was moving in different directions. Like, it was from the left to the right, now it's from the like, right to the left. <gasps> did you see that on the, is that the staircase? I don't remember those. Something just went across on the staircase. Um, so we are basically sitting here watching the security cameras to see if we can see orbs moving. <gasps> okay, I just saw a move. Um, for those of you who don't know what orbs are, they're, um, they tend to be spirits or energy, um, quite often spirits. Uh, we do catch them on camera often in film, taking pictures. Simon's taking several pictures of orbs. Um, we have actually caught several on this particular one right there from moving in all different directions, so it probably means that there's more than one, because, yeah, it's actually quite shocking how many we've actually seen in that particular room. And we did just see something in one of the rooms down here, but it seems to be quite strong in that particular room, so it's actually gonna be really interesting when we actually go inside the room to see what we can pick up. Uh, we can see orbs in some of the rooms right now, and it's quite nice just to see it from a distance. I don't feel anything from them, not picking anything up, so it's nice just to view it. <laughs> and be free from the tension it makes me feel. Though I'm sure we're gonna go in there soon and we'll, I'll see what I, what I pick up then. Now somewhere in this fort will be what we call a portal, a door. I mean, it's full of actual doors but there will be a hole between dimensions it's the only way I can describe it really where entities are able to move to and fro we use doors and gates and you know, if you think of the front of the place as being the entrance the gate that's what spirits use to pass between the dimension that they function in and the one that we understand we're in and I think that that portal is right where I'm standing. And I think that's why on the security cameras there are orbs whizzing about right here. We were using that camera up there. And I think that they're coming through a portal here because I'm getting the most incredible cold air currents around me, which is always an indicator. So this is my electromagnetic field meter and I use this to detect any kind of electrical current and any kind of electromagnetic field, which is different, it's an important difference, in that it's a kind of ambient field that sits around anything electrical or anything that produces an electrical field. 
So I'm going to switch it on for the first time. I've got no idea what it's going to do. What's that doing? A big fat zero. But all is not lost. I'm not disappointed because what that tells me is that it's there actually is. It's stuttering. Look at it. Oh, it's way too soon. What I was going to say was that it was providing a bench. Oh, that is very, very interesting. Oh, that is really weird. I was about to tell you that that wasn't doing anything at all and that that proved that there was no electrical fields around here because we haven't got any lights on and there's no power on apart from the safety exit things which use a tiny amount of power. And that is, I've never seen it do that before. It's just jumping. Do you know, and weirdly, that is almost going in time to my heartbeat. Dave, you've got to see this, mate. Come over here, look. I've got myself, actually, which is... Um, You're getting a reading? Um, it's quite sporadic at the moment. It's between three... Actually, but look at it, look at it, it's jumping. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's odd. This spot was the spot that I mentioned that is, I think, is the portal. And that energy fluctuation, to me, would very much indicate that it, that it could be, that I could be onto the right track. Because that was a source of spontaneous spirit energy, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's just my view, but that was spirit energy working. So imagine someone stepping through a doorway. That's what we were seeing. So I think we've been joined by something. Earlier, Rod asked me if there was any spirits around him, following him in this building. So I did a quick drawing, as you can see, doing my automatic drawing and writing. And I figured out that there was a soldier, maybe 30 years old, that would have worn a very straight grey hat with a red stripe and a, a kind of grey uniform with a sash. And then I told you this, and you said that the soldiers would have worn the sash when they were on duty when they were doing the patrols, right? Yeah, so the, the, the duty NCO, the duty officer, would normally wear a red sash, as they do today. So you've got a lot of visual prompts here, so I don't know whether that's what makes people feel uneasy when they come into this part of the fort. Uh, so this is the Weymouth at War exhibition which showcases just, um, just some of the devastation that Weymouth suffered during World War II so, um, and would have during the First World War as well, obviously more oh. prominently in the Second World War. It is an area that people just don't, that don't feel very easy in here. And when you actually come in, you come through a very narrow corridor, you turn right straight away. Oh, it's actually a void, it's not really a corridor. Um, so yeah, it was, it, this was the first time you've walked into here, so you know, there are people that know this area of the fort very well, that still are not happy to come in here at times um, because you come through this narrow void and I think another of that plays on the emotions, plays on your sensations a little bit. Um, mm. Yeah, the, 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 you know, people just feel a, a sense of unease when they come into this very sort of small area. I find that when mannequins are used in haunted places that the spirits can use the mannequin to look out. Um, I've seen places where that's been the case, so I don't know if that's another reason why it can be disconcerting to look at them. I mean, obviously they are very striking, so they are very, you know, they're there for effect, so that, um, you know, it sort of really brings home some of the devastation that was experienced here locally um, in the war. Um, so, yeah, they're very striking. Obviously they're done to, to sort of evoke um, and provoke, I guess, a response. This area between those two hatches, yeah. the floor is dodgy there. Here. We're in the Caponier of the Noth Fort. 
It's um, an outbuilding, it's at right angles to the uh, main body of the fort. When you look out through the slits, uh, the musket loops, you can see the moat. If any attackers made it as far as the moat, they'd be fired on by muskets and by 32 pounder smoothbore cannons. Uh, I'm picking up what feels like a senior officer, very correct, plays everything by the book, very military man. He was responsible for this area and ruled it with a rod of iron because of danger, there being a danger, um, the danger of explosion. So no cigarettes, no sparks, nothing that's going to cause a spark, he's saying. And he's still, he's still running it, he's still guarding it. And his uniform's actually quite modern. It's, it's uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a brilliant expert on military history, but it looks like First World War. Um, British Army, um, brown, it's like saddle leather, a leather belt and a, um, a leather cross strap like that, like that, with a black beret on, like a sort of informal thing. And he is still guarding this area, this ammunition area because he doesn't trust anybody else to... I'm getting kind of like a, um, a fusion between here and now and the First World War. He retired from running this place and went into retirement and then lived locally and died locally and still walks these boards in this part of uh, Noth Fort that no one gets to see because it's closed to the public. So we're very privileged to be here. And he's slightly annoyed by us being here because this is his domain. He doesn't like people coming here, so he's a bit discombobulated by our presence, for which I apologize, sir. I feel like I need to call him sir. And he's saying to us that he just wants to be left alone so that he can make sure that everything is tickety-boo and running properly and to the book. So he's saying politely that he'd like us to leave, leave him to it. And he's, he's got a moustache and he's doing this. He's saying, oh, by the way, those two young fillies you're with are very attractive. He's saying, unsurprisingly, I don't get a mention. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Can you tell how he died? Because I have a really big pain in my abdomen. Oh, he says he doesn't want to talk about it. But you died of stomach cancer, didn't you? He says he's not even really sure. He's not interested anyway. Uh, he sees illness as weakness. He just wants to carry on. And he's saying that if we stay around much longer, he's going to get us transporting ammunition. He says he's got a job to do. He's gone. So where are you taking us now, Rob? Uh, we're just going past the, what we call the engine room. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's quite interesting, this. I don't the lights off. Yeah. Reconstruction of the control room of when this place was used as a nuclear bunker. This is the control room of the nuclear bunker, which was set up here during the days of the Cold War. If the bombs had fallen, then the, the government would have been uh, installed in here. Basically a communication centre. Communication and control. You see all the teletext, telephones, radio, etc. Because I'm interested in energy, I'm going to douse with my dowsing crystal, this thing, to see what indication I get about the energy in this area. Now, a round and round movement means very positive energy and side to side means not positive, blocked and sometimes downright dangerous. And the signal I'm getting is very much a side to side movement. Now, it surprises me because the atmosphere in this whole complex to me feels very friendly and very warm. I wouldn't have a problem being down here on my own for an extended amount of time. In fact, I'd really like to come back and do that one day. But the signal I'm getting is a very negative reading and it intrigues me why that is. Because it suggests that certainly this spot is being held by something, being held by uh, an undesirable energy. Maybe the whole fort just needs a good old spiritual cleanse. In general, um, gunpowder was stored that side. Rifle 
room. Yes, there's a collection of uh, rifles, swords, bayonets, etc. Yeah. From all eras, not just from the, the Napoleonic uh, time. Do you think that sometimes they say that the people who wielded the weapons stay with the weapon in death? Do you think that could be the case here? That's quite possible because the weapon was your best friend in mm. war. I guess for the soldiers, the weapon meant life, yes. even though it was bringing death. That's true, yes. This is one of my favourite parts of the fort. We are within a nuclear bunker within the Noth Fort. Um, it's a place of safety, I guess, security, but um, no, it's a place of atmosphere and, you know, it, it's a fascinating place. I mean, historically, it's just great. I just enjoy being in sort of military bunkers and um, sort of these very subversive locations. I mean, they, they fascinate me it's historically and environmentally as well. Rod, where did these weapons come from and which era? Was it just from the UK or was it... Some of them are foreign, there are some German uh, rifles here and they come from all eras, you know, from the Boer War, Napoleonic, uh, First World War, Second World War. I know something about weapons sort of freaks me out a bit, it makes me think about death, but like these knives in particular make me feel quite eerie and strange. I don't know if I have some form of connection with the shape of knife from a past life, but this like particular kind of weapon makes me feel really uneasy. So far we have picked up on the spirit of a very senior officer who ran the gunnery section that's not normally available to the public where we connected with him. And we have picked up on all sorts of other random spirits as they have come and gone. But the place is absolutely full of them. It's, it's very, very atmospheric. And it's like walking through, when you encounter one of these spirits in these corridors that we're in now, it's like walking through a great big jelly baby. There's a definite sensation. It's like walking through plastic. As you pass through it, there's a resistance and it's gone. And then you can feel it behind you. So it must be in negative effect what it's like for them walking through us. But when we walk through them, we're all picking up on it. We can feel it. It was really strange. The air feels quite like thick, as if you're. There's so many spirits around. So many. We like... can't. We have. We're walking through them. That's what's happening. Yeah. Ooh. It does. Oh, can you imagine what it must feel like for them to walk through us? Does it feel like this? It just feels so thick. The air. Our, bo our bodies are. Our bodies are thicker than theirs, obviously. So this must feel really strange. Yeah. Do you not feel like you're in the way? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the way massively. Like they're not even pushing you out the way, they're just like... Yeah. It's a very strange feeling. This it makes room. my body tingle as well. I don't like this room. Can you go past quite quickly? I don't like it. Yeah, it's really dark. I don't like it. Our most famous ghosts, um, if you like, is uh, I suppose the whistling gunner who's been reported to have whistled um, in our ghost passage, our famous ghost passage for many years. Uh, allegedly it's a young serviceman that was hoisting a shell up to the rampart, the shell come back and crushed him um, and that's uh, reportedly the, the whistling gunner. Something had gripped around my tongue, and like like under here. Um, whoever is um, trying to use me is uh, had an upturned mouth, the lips, and they died from a heart condition. I have a really big pain in my chest. Okay, I don't even.
I'd say he's like 35, maybe around 40, between that sort of age. The ghost next door that we came to investigate here at Noth Fort in Weymouth was the whistling gunner, who's very famous here. There's been lots of reports about being able to hear his whistling and seeing him. And the guy that Jenny just drew is the gentleman that I saw in the munitions depot with the moustache, the black beret, very military, very correct. And he's, he's got a moustache and he's doing this. And he's saying, oh, by the way, those two young fillies you're with are very attractive, he's saying. From I Felt the First World War, who was the gentleman who died close to here, who died of stomach cancer, I felt. That's what he told me. This is the fifth take I've tried to do to say that this is the Whistling Gunners Corridor. And every time I say it, I'm getting my words all mussed up. <laughs> I can't speak. There is a really, really strong entity here which is really messing with my vocal cords. It's really messling, messling. I can't speak, it's, it's, it's messing with my throat and just kind of jangling my um, ability to speak. It's really strange. So just as Simon was doing that last piece just a moment ago, we did hear uh, a clicking which sounded like it was coming from the corridor just up through there. Um, but actually I think I've just established the roots of the noise. So if you come through here, this is our ghost passage. Um, we have had this quite often when we've had some investigation teams in here. We've got a void here um, and we actually have the water coming in from outside. It's been a very wet night so it's very damp here. Uh, that comes from the upper parts of the fort and down here and, and echoes in this void uh, which obviously goes through this corridor and can sometimes obviously sound like it's a, it's a click or it's a noise coming from uh, other areas. Uh, the more it rains, the heavier these droplets get and that's sort of the, the more powerful they come and hit the floor. That was one just, uh, just then. And another one, um, and that has been on occasions interpreted as footsteps. So I did just wonder because I heard that click up the corridor, which sounded very much like it came up the corridor, but it's actually it's coming from here. Um, guys, can you just wait here a second? I want to go down here on my own and see what I pick up. This spot, this is the spot, there was a, a fight here between two low unlisted, uh, not unlisted, but um, non-commissioned powder monkeys, it's the best, that's, 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 the, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the, the phrase I'm getting. And right where I'm standing, they had a fight uh, it was really brutal, and one of them got their throat cut and died right here. That happened not in the 20th century, but in the 19th century. I, I can hear the, the grunts, the shouts, the, uh, the noise, the fighting, the blows, and I just, I, I can feel cut, I can feel a cut on my throat. It's really horrible. It's like I can't, I can't, I can't breathe, it's, it's all here. It's, it, it's, it's actually, it's really, 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 um, it's really unsettling, it's really horrible. Ah, oh, ah, oh. this guy, he just, he bled to death here. And the other one ran away. Oh, 
You have to give me a break, sorry. Um, so real. And I just don't understand how this happens. I don't understand why you connect with a specific event. I mean, like, this was, I don't know, 100, 100 and whatever years ago. Um, but the, the echo of it is still here. It's like dropping a, a stone into a pond. The, 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 the ripples or the, the e echo of the energy continues to, to move out and when you pass through it, when I pass through it, it just washes over you and I honestly felt like I was dying then. It's just absolute uh, uh, hopelessness, blood gushing down my front, um, just like soaked, soaked in blood, my neck flapping open. Uh, it's absolutely horrible, so violent uh, and so real. <sighs> you seriously have to cut now. Production of, the, of a Victorian, what was called a gun deck, which was where they had the big guns ready to shoot out against the enemy. And I'm getting this really anomalous reading on the electromagnetic field meter. That's still pretty weird for an area where there's no electricity, no power on whatsoever. But as you saw when we switched it on just now, it was really leaping around. In fact, um, Unfortunately, we didn't get it because uh, it was still dark, but when I switched it on, it actually went off the scale altogether. It was like banging right over there. So strange. This, this is what I mean about alternating current. Yeah, we're getting a reading, yeah? And as I hold it up to the electrical cable, you can see that, apart from the fact that this thing is, is interfering with it massively, it's a fairly steady reading. And as I move it away, if you, if you pull back, Jenny, keep it in focus, you, you can see that it's dropping. Then I go in like this, and then it climbs up because it's getting closer to the power in the cable. And then I go away, and it drops down. So I can control that really easily. In goes up, away goes down. This is this is Dave's um, meter, which is a digital version of mine. It takes the same. It's got the same calibration, and that's showing like one and a half uh, milligauss, and I'm showing three so not massively out and there is a sort of constant fluctuation so it's actually it's the easy way to show this to put them together like that they don't they don't seem to interfere with each other but they are giving the same reading yes it's just about two and five is an average reading and above that whoa, starts whoa look at that look at that look at that yours is peaking as well that's really freaky. Now you see that, they were both peaking at the same time. Look at that. Well, whoever you are, that is absolutely incredible. Wow, look. That's amazing. That's really high. That is really high. There's something very powerful in here. My whole body's going to Oh my god. OK, 
like it, it's here in the room. That is off the scale. This entity is here in the room. Oh my god, so look at that. Look at that. It's keeping it up as well. Yeah, it is. I've never seen anything like that. Quick, quick. Now, I think we all agree that is pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I've only ever taken a reading around the 40 minute gas mark in one location. Um, three and five is the average above them. Oh, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're witnessing is a spirit basically showing off. That's incredible. There's, t there's tapping in my, the microphone as well. And you see how they're both jumping at the same time? I knew it, I knew as soon as I walked into this room that there was something very powerful in here. This is incredible what we're getting. I have never in 15 years of ghost hunting and doing what I do for a living as a, as a house clearer, as, um, as a healer, as a, a psychic and a medium, I have never seen an electronic reading with two completely different instruments taking the same reading at the same time back to back there is no electricity around here, there's no power, there's no reason why that should be happening. And it's off, literally off the scale. Wh whoever's in here is just, is, just, is just showing off and he's, he is actually right here. He's standing right behind me. But he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not from here, he's not connected to this place. This, this is an entity that has come through the portal that we identified earlier on who has nothing to do with this place. This is much more powerful. Why has it got so cold? Um, the yeah. Stops, okay. Um, the temperature is, is dropping. This is going berserk. Look, go back on here, look at this. No, you don't like me, do you? He likes Rod. Rod is his friend. Did you know that, Rod? No, I didn't. Well, you're connected to a very powerful entity that hangs out here. But this entity is not from the fort. This is not uh, an entity that has been here before. This is an entity that's come through that portal. And it's extremely powerful. I'm telling you that to do what it just did with the meters takes, it, it's like holding, it, you have to hold it next to a, it's, that's him creaking, sorry. sorry. Um, you have, to give you an idea of how, how hard it is to get that kind of reading that we just saw, you would have to hold my um, tri-field meter, my electromagnetic field meter, next to a microwave oven to get that kind of reading. So powerful. So I'm going to ask you again, please can you do your trick with the meters? I want to know who you are and you can connect with me because you're not going to frighten me and I'm actually just as powerful as you are, as you know. And that's why you're doing this, isn't it? This is kind of like a show of strength. So if you want to give us a show of strength, why don't you stop pissing around with electric meters and drop the temperature in the room, make some sort of sound, touch me, do something really impressive. And I'm not going to talk to you in that language, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. It's getting colder. It is getting colder. Um, just show my um, dowsing crystal. Right, well, when the crystal does this and the chain starts to tremble, this is, this is worse. Um, th this, is, this is a worse thing than um, move from side to side. Because this is when an entity, and I, I've seen this before, I saw it at, the, um, um, at a pub in Wales that we were investigating. And I've, I've seen it before. Whoa, there we go, look at that. Can one of you film this? Jenny, you film me. Yes, that's right. Yeah. 
aren't you a big boy? Holding my crystal. And you can see that we're getting the same reading of of both of them. It's peaking. That's so high. Yeah. Dave, you've been with us all evening this evening and um, we've been seeing some pretty extraordinary things together. What do you make of the uh, recordings that we've just been getting? Um, no, it's interesting. I've never seen, uh, I mean, 170 odd milligauss. I, I clock there. Well, what, does, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, high fluctuating EMF can create um, physiological effects that people can interpret as being paranormal, but not, not that we're here to sort of try and justify a paranormal experience. So we're looking for, therefore, a high reading may be why somebody's experienced something here. We've just literally put the meters on just to kind of get a reading here, but that's, um, that's fascinating to see a reading that high. Well, that explains why my heart was thumping so much when we came into this room. And as soon as I walked in, as always, I just knew that there was something different here, something quite special. And I have never seen such an incredibly huge um, electromagnetic reaction. And all three of our meters were going off the scale all at the same time. In, in sync. It's kind of hard to walk away from it because it's just unprecedented. I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely incredible and I feel quite honoured actually to have, um, to have just experienced that. It's uh, sort of from an academic point of view that's absolutely fascinating and personally I could sort of stay here all night to um, observe it because there's something, this is a real hot spot, there's something extremely powerful here and your instinct is to want to track it and monitor it. But we are going to head home now. And I think that's a really good place to end and to wrap up this edition of Ghost Next Door. Not quite what we're expecting, but then it never is. But it's been an incredible evening. And that is the most fantastic end to it, the most fantastic affirmation of spirit energy. So I hope you've found that as interesting as we did. And we'll see you next time on Ghost Next Door.